So first thing is I've got this sketch that I did uh, yesterday and it's this right here is kind of like the level of detail that I will be okay like going to colors with. I, for my personal skill set, I'm not, I can't take a really rough sketch to color because I know I'll, I'll have trouble um, working in the composition in color uh, if there's a lot of changes that still need to be made. So like, I like to get it pretty close to exactly what I want in the black and white phase so that I, and if I'm going to make changes from here on out, it's going to be minor things, not major compositional things. And I won't be adding any new, uh, like big, like massive new elements that aren't in the scene right now. Um, and to add on to that point, for me, especially, I know that having references is super, super important. I, I do not recommend starting to go into color without really good references specific to your scene so like take a scene that matches uh like logically what is in your scene so i want this to be kind of a gray diffused light um sort of mossy creepy swamp so i i have a reference that fits that sort of logically so I'll be able to see how the atmosphere in that environment is working and translate into mine. Uh, there's no house in the reference that I did so I also have gathered references for the kind of house that I want and the materials I want this house to be made out of and stuff. So like having all that stuff specific stuff lined up always helps me a lot. Um, sometimes I'm too like I'm too excited to get into the painting. So I'll get like a couple of references. I won't nail anything down and I'll just start. And then something looks off about my piece. Like the colors aren't great and like not everything is unified and it, nothing's, it's not looking that realistic. And that's usually because I'm just guessing and tr trying to uh, think my way through the colors rather than like observing something and seeing uh, what's happening with the colors in my reference and how I can translate translate those into my scene. So, so I'll show you, I'll just show you the references I have a, a little bit. Um, none of these are my photos. I just grabbed them off Pinterest and stuff. Uh, so here you can see, you guys seeing that? Yeah. So this right here is my main like sort of reference that I want to use in terms of color and values. This was actually the, like part of my inspiration for the image. I really like just, I really like what's happening in the water and, and you know, being able to see the, uh, the bed of the, of the swamp here, but also the reflection on top and how that's working. Um, and it's just got the, a really nice mix of colors that I like, it's kind of my comfort zone colors, like, earth tones and greens and stuff. So that's my main ref. I gathered some refs like this for uh, building materials. How I want to treat the building. Um, I want, it may look like it's made out of wood right now, but I do want it to be like stone, uh, sort of dilapidated stone. And I'm not, I, I think I want like a mossy grassy roof. And I just thought like I'd get some refs for some trees if any of them still have foliage on them because like it's not represented in this ref. Uh, and then down here I just have some oil paintings uh, to inspire myself for um, ways to handle colors and my, my palette and mixing and stuff. I love, I absolutely love the treatment on this sort of rock. Uh, I love the cool tones mixed with these saturated oranges. So not necessarily that I'm going to do this kind of treatment or those colors. It's just, it's more just inspiration for like, um, how I want to express, uh, the image, uh, 
have yeah, in a painterly way. So those are my reps. So let's see. So the first thing I'll do is like, I might just make a gradient map over all of the layers. By the way, this is a setup with, I'm sure you've seen this method before. Uh, I know John Park does it, Eitan Zana does this. Uh, it's, everything is separated into these graphic shapes and I've assigned them values and sort of separated my sketch this way. You can see me turning them on and off. And, but I'm keeping it like simple. Like, look, I have five layers here total uh, because I don't like, yes, you can add like light shapes and shadow shapes and, and clip them to your layer and have those separate so you can just colorize them. Uh, so you can make the shadow color, make the light color separately. That is a good way of doing it. It does work really well. I have done that before, but for this and what I kind of find myself doing nowadays is like, um, it's just keeping everything as few layers as possible. And I'll, I'm going to paint over all these shadow details anyway, because this isn't, this is just like me getting my idea down. Um, I will paint over it anyway and, and use different brushwork and sort of maybe less graphic shapes. And so I'm going to paint over it anyway and pick colors that way. Um, so what I'm going to do here, since it's all merged, is I will use gradient maps to get the colors at a basic level in all these layers. And then you'll see me adding uh, light shapes and shadow shapes um, after the fact. But for me, the best way to do it is just to get an overall color palette, like sort of installed, and then, uh, and then look at the image, evaluate it, and decide like where I want to go from there. The first thing I'll do is I will take a gradient map. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to group my entire painting, mask it, and I'm going to just crop out a little side panel here. make a background black and I'll bring my rep right next to the painting like this I have to make sure the gradient map is in the group so now I have a direct like comparison here Okay, um, so gradient map. I'm just gonna work within this gradient map. I'm not gonna add too many values because I wanna, I wanna just see if I can achieve something close in a simple way. Delete the mask. Uh, so gradient maps, the way they work is you can set separate, uh, you can separate as many values as you want and then assign color to those values. So I'm going to take the lightest value and assign it, maybe not pure white, because I want to save that, like maybe till the end, but I'll take this kind of kind of hazy blue up here. I'll take the darkest value, and I think it's just kind of warm, dark color. Okay. So what you can actually do with a gradient map is you can look at the color, look at its black level. So this is a seven and you can actually match it to the black level in your values. So if I go in this, it's basically pure white. It's almost a hundred percent. It's 98. So it's okay where it is, but you can see things change when I bring it down. So it will replace the lightest values in my painting with this value. And 
you can crunch it down to um, have it be even more contrasty if you want. So I got my lights, I got my darks. Overall, uh, it's there's. I'm trying to take an overview of the colors, and I, I want to get the green in there for sure. It's sort of like a mid-tone in the painting. So I'll pick a mid-green here. And it's, it's a pretty bright value. So see if I bring it up in the 80s. Um, you can see which areas of the painting it affects. So I'm definitely... Obviously, I'm not going to keep it like this. I'm just trying to get this overall gradient map to match some of the colors. So I'll add in this nice, like, brown here. It's, like, kind of rusty brown. And I can bring that up. So I have four different tones in there and I kind of want to have like a gray tone maybe between these two. This one's about halfway. This one's dark. So I'll put one in the middle and I'll maybe put a grayish tone at maybe like around 25%. Just to like cool off some of the worms that are happening. And I even think that green could be a little bit more gray. And I'll bring in some of the green later, just so I have more control of that. Same same with that brown, actually. Could be a little bit. Okay, so Right now, obviously the picture doesn't look like, like my painting doesn't look like the picture right now, but it doesn't have to. You're, you right now you're just trying to establish some colors that you can work off of. So, and you can decide what you like right here. So like I, sometimes what I'll do is, I'll, I can actually make another gradient map and and add some of the other colors going on in the scene, like uh, some of the blues. And I might, I might add, you know, some of this kind of hazy blue color. It's sort of like a cool gray. And then maybe I could just do a dark version of that color. And what's cool here is you can mask it. What I do is like a, you turn down the opacity so you can see some of your painting coming through, some of the first gradient map coming through. Just get it to like a nice level where you can still see a little bit of color variation. And then I'll paint the mask black. And I'll sort of bring those blue tones in, like, with an airbrush. It's kind of got this vignette, like, bowl shape coming like this. Um, I think it'd be nice if the house was a little bit affected by this blue haze. It'll separate it from the foreground. And then we got the reflection of the sky in the, uh, in the water. So make sure that there's some there. So now what I'll do that I have this sort of like established. There's a lot of, of hues missing in my painting that are in the ref, but I'm okay with this as like a very basic level. So now I'll show you the reason why, um, Oops. Uh, yeah. So I'll show you the reason why I keep 
very few layers at this stage. I will group all of them and mask them to their selection. Now this might seem overcomplicated, but it's what I do. I group them, I drop the, oh, I didn't even have to, sorry. I don't have to group them. I will just clip them to each layer. Um, so I'll grab them, hold alt, click and drag them. That will duplicate them. And I clip them to the layer underneath. Same thing, clip to the layer underneath layer underneath and the background. Now I will grab each one of my layers and duplicate them just so I have a, and I'll group them and just put value. This is like a backup uh, so I can check the values. Um, so now I just merge those adjustment layers to the layers. I have the back the backup value sketch anyway. So now I've got this, and they're they're all flattened. They have a little bit of color in them. So now you can start painting uh, and making um, bringing in some of those missing hues. So the one thing I want is this kind of these kind of darkish blues in the background, it's like shadows from. Uh, shadows being created by the atmosphere or or the forest way in the background so I'll, I'll literally just paint uh, with this color and I'm looking at the ref for it to help me and oops I think I painted directly be careful that you're on your right layer. Just I always like make a new layer just to test something out. Um, I want to paint this blue kind of. Okay. Uh, I'm going to. I'm still like. I might just change that green color back there. So here, here's another trick I'll show you. I don't want the trees to be green like this. I want them a little bit more blue. So I'll just do a color balance layer and I'll adjust it to sort of get the right, see this is kind of like, I don't know if I compl complicate these things because like just that little adjustment kind of gets the, the trees much closer to the color I want. Then I will mask out the parts I don't want. And there, that's probably fine. Cause we don't really need that green in the back so much. Maybe a little, little bit. And if you do want, you can, you can just mask out um, some of the blue and then once you, it's masked you can keep testing stuff I think that's okay right there um, and now I kind of don't even need this layer because I was able to achieve it just with color balance I might keep it, but just take it really down low because I like how it kind of occludes some of the trees. So, and I'll just merge this to the background. I don't like working with very many layers. Um, now this layer, I like working back to front because uh, when you work in the background and the sky and stuff, it's really going to affect colors of everything else so it's it's nice to establish like a mood starting from the back um so these like 
still have a lot of that green. I'll just literally control U. I can't remember if that's the default uh, hotkey for Q saturation adjustment, but it's what mine is. And I'll just desaturate them and maybe take some of that green out. Like it, it was like this. And I just want it to be maybe like that. And now I will, moving to the house layer, uh, I'm going to paint directly onto the house just to lay in the colors I want because I want to get this right early so that then it's fun to just paint details on the house when I have the palette like in. So I'm looking at my refs. I think I want, I do think I want like a mossy roof maybe. So I, I made a clipping mask layer. I clipped it to my house layer and I think I'm just gonna pick from this kind of nice green stripe uh, and just paint directly on my house. That for the roof, really, really rough. I, I literally just want colors to grab. Um, and now I'll put another clipping mask under that. And I just want to paint this kind of stone texture. There's a ref here, which I absolutely love. Uh, I actually studied this this morning and did a painting and I recorded it and my camera battery died. It's a new camera and a new camera stand. Uh, my camera battery died because I, I suck at, like, I've never done this before, so I, I like, I didn't account for my battery. Um, so that, sadly, video, that video will not be getting uploaded. But I really love the, the colors and the variation in, in hues and, and values on this. So this is like the kind of way I want to treat the stone. And I, I just think, I love the details in this. It's super low res, but. Um, so I just found that on Pinterest. I don't know. I think it's in France or something. I don't know whose photo that is. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah. I'm Now I'm just like looking at my ref and just trying to, I'm not color picking or anything. I'm just trying to observe what's happening in those colors. And um, I, I want to achieve the same thing kind of. So there's this really nice like yellow ochre kind of tone in there. There are these nice like splotches of gray. There's these really dark kind of like it looks like soot or something. It's like I really want it to be cool and dark. Cool as in cold, but also cool. Um, so now I'll just take that, I'll take a soft kind of bristly brush and kind of knock it back a bit, it's a little bit intense. And I'm just literally trying to put colors down that I can take advantage of later. So. these like warm 
can use these little mid-tone, like really saturated mid-tone areas sparingly and like have that be like the star of the show, uh, so to speak on, on your subject. Cause I know that you're going to be looking sort of right there, sorry, right here. So I'm going to make it really awesome for you to look there. So now I can like, I almost like, I don't, I just want to get my colors going and, and say like, okay, I like these colors. I, but I, I can't help myself. I need to do some values because it's, uh, that's what's missing right now. Like, obviously this is really ugly. It's done with a soft, like, like not opaque brush. It's just like I'm laying colors on top of each other, but like I, what's missing is the, um, Sort of like the occluded shadows and the little details, like where the door is gonna go. I, I wanna have like a little tiny window or something here maybe, and up here. And you might think, okay, you set up these values and now you're like breaking your values by going super dark here, but which yes I am, but um, I will fix it, I have a plan. Cause I, I just, I'm thinking about like local colors mainly. And while I'm here, I'm gonna do some value. So it is important. Trying to think about where I want these little details. Um, and I haven't decided what this this stuff here is going to be. I thought maybe it was like, yeah, I think it's just gonna be like dead trees and uh, overgrown like roots and stuff. It's kind of like I want the house to look like it's sinking into the swamp a bit. So, is that part of that? Yeah, it is. So, for that, I might just make a darken layer. Switch this to darken. And I'll pick, uh, like, a, a value. And just paint this in like that. Okay, and now... That's my colors that I made. Um... This is where I was talking about, like, it's it's good to have, like, a, a painting that you can follow the logic of. Because if this house is sort of near, um, th if you can see my cursor, like, near this area, I can pick those shadow values for the shadow values of my house. So I will pick, like, this kind of cool color, which I was pretty close to my gradient map. And this, I know, could be the value of the shadows. So, now I can just make a lighten layer. And paint it over those dark areas I made. out it looks awful because it's like an albedo pass there's no lighting yet it's just like I'm putting colors in um, so before I move on I'll just add like an indication of how I want the light to go and I keep merging because like it's it's just like I, I prefer to work like kind of messy and like raw like that like I like just painting stuff out if it doesn't work and, and painting over it not necessarily manipulating layers so what I'll do now is I'll just put a layer over that I think the sun is going to be like 
the sun's gonna be like up here sort of backlit which is really nice because I can create a lot of like interesting shadows I, like I'll just do like an overall sort of shadow pass on this with a soft brush I can put this whole front thing in shadow don't worry about the color right now because like that's why Photoshop is the best because we can just change it it's on like a test layer so like I'll put that sort of in shadow with a soft brush I might put it on multiply here's where my value sketch comes in handy because I will take, put this on top. I'll change my, I set my control Y to be, to change my color mode to dot, um, dot gain. So when I press that, it will show the values. Um, you, you can also do like, you can put a black layer on top and set it to saturation and stuff. But this is just easier for me. So I'll put it to black and white, put my value sketch up and you can see, uh, you can see the changes in value since after what I've done. And then you can evaluate if you need to, like here I can evaluate, do I need to brighten the image now in the color version to maintain the values or am I okay with how it is now? Um, what I will do is just take this and I think I I want the I want it to be dark, but I might change the value structure of it as a whole. So I'll just put a le a uh, level adjustment on here, and I'll brighten the like this. So I still have the contrast relationship of the light and shadow, without the shadows necessarily having to be super dark. And if I wanted, I could actually have the roof be a brighter value than the background. Um, I don't. I don't think I want to though. I, I like that it's. I want it to be a sort of dark shape, a little bit mysterious. So I'll actually crunch it a little bit like that. I think. So now, if I press Control Y again. You can see the changes I made here. Much more readable. Oops. It's just much nicer to look at. Fits in the scene better. It's not. It's not like cut out. Like doesn't look weird. So I'm gonna merge it. And this is where like. Some people, so, so I know what some people would want in this image. It's like uh, some people feel the urge to like take this backlight and really like put it on this roof like this. But, but it looks, it looks cool. I'm not going to do that yet because in my head I had a plan and I, I had this idea for this house to be in shadow and, and kind of part of this like dead forest swamp. So I can always go back and do this. This would be a very concept already thing to do. It's kind of like a personal choice for me. It might not be the right one, but I had an idea in my head and I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna stick with my creepy gloomy idea. I'm gonna delete this, I'm not tempted to use it. And the last thing I'll do before moving on to the next layer is I just want to cool down this house in the shadows. It's a little bit too brown. Another trick, I'm sure you guys have heard it. 
because it's nothing new is change your color balance layer to color mode if you don't want it to mess with your values. I'll show you. Now, if I turn this on and off, there's no change. If I change it to normal and turn it on and off, you can see it actually is messing with my values. So, change it to color. And if you double click on that layer, uh, you can reveal the underlying layer wherever you want um, by crunching these values. If I want to reveal the light shapes, uh, I will crunch the white down a bit. So you'll see here. I don't want the blue to affect the roof. So the roof is the lightest, is the lightest value. So I'm going to crunch this and you can see the roof coming through. So I just get it to a spot where it be here. And then you can soften the edges. It's kind of hard to see because it's a it's just an adjustment layer. But I'll show you here. So say I want to paint this tree here. Uh, I don't know. I'll pick a I'll pick a red or something. I'll paint over this. Say this was all on one layer, and I only wanted it to affect those trees. I would double click this and remove it from the lighter values so that it's only on those trees. And then you can see it's got this kind of anti-alias edge that's not very nice, so you can soften that. So you usually get it to like where you want it kind of, and then just soften the transition a bit. So that's how that works. Okay, so I'm okay with the house like it is right now. Uh, these trees are working okay. I'm just going to, I'm gonna merge this. I'm actually gonna turn down this blue a bit. I'm going to, now on these, this layer here, I'm just literally going to put a clipping mask and paint with straight up paint again. I want like a textury kind of thing because I want to have like cool local values happening on the trees. Like the bark is more white and maybe like chunks underneath are darker. So... I'm just going to like, I mean, I could pick from my reference, like this kind of color. And you can pick like a fun, like kind of toothy brush here. So let's see. Hmm. Um, I'm looking for one specific one. I can't see it. Yeah, maybe this. Flow is 30. So this brush, I really like this brush. I've, I've done other videos where I had this brush and people have asked me for it. The reason I, I haven't given any of you brushes is because I don't know where the brush came from. I've bought brushes from other artists and they're all mixed together. And I don't, I, I don't know. I'm just like covering my ass. I don't want to give, uh, give everyone's brushes everywhere because I didn't make these. There's a couple brushes that I made like built from other people's brushes. Um, but I recommend you just go buy some brushes because you'll find most of the ones I have, almost every concept artist I know has them too. Uh, so you can look at like John Parks brushes. Uh, Jama has really good brushes. Um, you can look at Richard Anderson brushes, really cool for sketching. And I'm trying to think of anyone else. Anyway, those those are really good ones. I have a lot of brushes from John Park, so um, so that's why I, I won't do my brushes. I'm sorry. 
When I make all my own new brushes, I'll, I'll give them to you. I promise. So yeah, these are like, these kind of really gritty, like, bristly brushes are really fun to make shapes like on trees with. I love doing bark and stuff with this kind of brush. So I might just like make some textures here. And always think about lights on dark, too. So, just compositionally, if I'm gonna, if this background back here was a little bit darker, and I might darken things later, too. Say this background was like more like this value. It might be really nice to have a sort of birch tree, like, let's, super ugly um like this light value against the the black or the dark in the back so you know always keep your lights and darks in mind like what's behind the value you're painting can you make it pop out and and do you want it to pop out maybe you want it to kind of be lost in there if it's like an area that is uh not the, in the focal point and it's like you can play with like hidden and lost edges there so i'm just kind of seeing what happens if i put some some of this value i'll grab some of this really like i want to reserve most of these like juicy colors for these foreground trees but i'll mess with some of those mid-ground colors. This is why, like, separating layers helps a lot. I might make a video of, like, how to take a black and white sketch that's just all one layer and do the same thing, which I do do sometimes, and it is possible. It is possible to work with this method using those, the, like, layer, the um, underneath layer function uh, that I showed you earlier. It is possible to um, achieve like a painting like this with the same method if you have no layers. So, so don't worry. If you're one of those people that like sketching like with absolutely no layers, there is a way. I might, I might make a video about it. We'll see. So, just putting gritty kind of grainy textures and then like what I like to do is like I like this dark value too I like to put this like dark value to show damaged bark and you can put it under this is a really nice trick it's like those little knobs on trees from like broken branches or anything you can put this like little dark value to like indicate those little knobs it always makes the tree look uh it always brings some like realism to the tree but what i was gonna say is i like to just add crazy like like spatter brush textures and stuff sometimes to like over top of my paintings just to add like a little bit of a more like expressive feeling so like and it might create like happy accidents like you might if you're doing this on like a tree you might get random shapes that look like uh, knots in the tree or, or or just like imper little imperfections that you wouldn't get if you were just trying to paint um, everything deliberately so Create this texture. I might even do another layer. This this brush right here, I forget where I got it. I don't know why, I love this brush. And like, it's, it's kind of weird to find when to use it because you can't really use it for grass because it just makes like that shape. It doesn't like have any, and it's so random. But 
it's really nice for adding like gritty kind of noise. I like adding, uh, I like to add a little bit of noise to things like at this early stage and then you can kind of paint it out where you, where it makes sense. So, you know what? I'm not going to touch those anymore because I have to keep reminding myself what this stage is all about. I'm just trying to get the local colors in. Merge. Uh, and I might start adding a little bit of this green here. Um, right. It's a little bit of a gray green, but I want to add a little bit here. Maybe. shadow I'm picking the, the darker values in the like from the foreground but I'm not painting them that dark I'm like I'm just like trying to get started with that color I want to hint at this foreground color that it's going to be like I want to lead into the foreground so I'm subtly trying to not um, you know jump the shark on on uh, this green. I want a tiny hint of it right there. So, so we'll call that part done for now. Now we got the foreground. This is the most fun part for me. This is where like I love leaving the values in the foreground until last because it really, uh, the whole image comes together all of a sudden when you do this foreground. He's like more saturated, more contrast colors in the foreground. So now I can start picking the fun colors. Like, did you see red? And I could get that in on these trees. I love that red. It's so cool. My stomach just grumbling. You guys hear that? Uh, so I've got that little red. I want this green for sure. So now I'm deciding. Now I'm making lighting decisions. Like, do I want the, the green in this? ref is in a diffuse light it's not in shadow my foreground as it is right now looks like it's in shadow so i have to make a decision right now if it's going to be in shadow or in light i kind of want it to be in shadow a little bit like maybe there's just a big cloud like a storm cloud or something because i want it to really separate from this mid ground i want it to be like a hazy kind of lit really diffused lit area um, against the foreground. So I'll have to, but I might be able to use, get a little bit of sun right on the edge and maybe back here. So I, I want to, I want to take advantage of that green color, but it doesn't remember like everything in moderation, like it, it's, the green's not going to be as awesome if it's absolutely everywhere in your painting. So I, I'm okay with that amount of green, I think. And now the shadow color. Do not be tempted to just turn your shadow a really blue version of the green. Think of it as more like gray, going like towards more gray. It it will make the saturated parts of your painting pop a lot more. It will look less cartoony and it's, it takes some restraint. Uh, cause I definitely used to do a lot of blue in my shadows because I thought like, Oh, it's like, I know color theory. Like it's cool shadows, warm lights, but 
but uh, cool shadows means cooler than your uh, light temperature. Uh, a way to change a warm trans slowly to a cool is just by, by adding gray. So I'm going to try and think of it as like, I'm going to darken it here and I'm going to bring it more gray. And I'm going to start with this kind of tone. I, I feel like my camera is shaking a lot because when I paint, I hope it's not too bad. So this, I feel like this tone is okay. I'm just gonna cover it over this whole area. And now I'll show you like something, you can do like a wash kind of thing here. And I'll pick this like little cool green. See like it's, it's even warmer than mine, but I will make it a bit gray and I'll bring it, I'll add a tiny bit of blue just cause I wanna see what happens. I know I'm like hypocrite much, but and remember like what's around your your colors because light's bouncing everywhere, so everything is affecting everything else. The green is going to affect the color of the tree trunks and and vice versa maybe even, like depending where where they are and where the light is. So it's always nice to unify your painting by bringing certain colors into other objects, bringing the green from the grass into the like trunks from the trees a little bit, very subtly without changing the actual local color of the tree. So I did this like kind of green wash here over this foreground. And then I want this really saturated terminator here where it's light and then back to this kind of gray but I, I want it to be soft. I don't want it like a, I don't want like a slice. I want it like, maybe like that. Now I do my trick that I showed you. You take the underlying layer and I don't want that to be, that green to be in those shadows as much. I just want it to be in those kind of top plane shapes. So crunch it till I see that maybe now you grab you hold, I forgot to mention this earlier you hold alt and grab one arm of this little node and you can bring it out to soften it a little bit right there so it did not get the whole value of my green I, you can see how it darkens a bit but I don't mind because it makes the it keeps a really strong like graphic read and you can always paint over it like after you've got this established so I'm okay with that. I might do the same thing to this tree. It's red kind of like this. Soften that. Okay. Save. I'm just going to pause the video for a sec because I want to make sure my battery is not going to die again. Okay. I think we're good on the camera. Let the dog go out too. Uh, okay. What was I doing? I just did this grass in the foreground and I think I'll just I'm gonna merge that. And I'll just like darken this super foreground element <clears throat> a little bit extra. Camera's definitely shaking when I paint, so we're, we're learning. I'll attach it to my other table over here uh, next time. So I don't know if like, I want to remove, let me just put a mask. Do I want to show more of that water?
what I do too, what I'm doing right now, the reason I keep looking over here is because I'm looking at my refs, but also Photoshop has this navigator where I will, I'll turn this on and I'll shrink it down like this and I'll put it on my other screen just so I can like see it from far and small constantly in real time. Uh, it, it helps me a lot. So uh, I'm looking at that, turning it off and on and blurring my eyes and like looking at the water. I think, I can't decide. I'll, I'm gonna come back to it. Keep it in mind, come back to it later. Okay. Um, now the water, I want to get some of the, I'm going to go back to the background here because the water's part of it. I forgot. I want to get some of those like sort of rich blue colors in the water. So I'll just put them in roughly. And there's actually like, it's so cool because you can see under the water through the reflections. Now, I wanna like, I paint some reflections in just with like rock colors. Oh, that's weird. And I just remember like, the, the water, the reflections won't have like, as intensive values as the, the, um, the actual subject, like its reflection will always be a little bit less than what it actually is. So the whites won't be as white and the darks won't be as dark. So, um, so just keep that in mind, like when you're painting reflections. And now I'll just paint some like wiggly and think about like the house there's it's kind of like a more complex subject but there's the Fresnel effect where it's um, Fresnel Fresnel I don't know how to say it I've heard it said every single way but um, even though the house reflection should be here the Depending on like the condition of the water, like if it's windy or anything, the it will be actually might be reflecting the sky depending on the angle that you're seeing it at. So this is another, this is one thing I didn't think about looking at reference for, um, for this image, but I definitely should have to decide, make an educated decision on what, how to handle the water up here. Um, because it might be nice to have a bright reflection kind of like slicing across here, like a reflection of light. Um, I, didn't, I didn't look up refs for this, so whatever I do do would be a guess and it might not look believable. So that, that's the issue with like, if you don't have good refs. Um, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I might just leave it for now and see. Cause it is nice like to have a bright value there, but I'm already going against like what I wanted in the first place was this more like dark mid ground. Dark in terms of mood, not necessarily value. So Let's work on the foreground trees a little bit more. Do the same kind of treatment with my crazy like grainy brushes. So we got the light like up here. So even if it's diffused, just like think about, obviously think about the light direction. And I'm not necessarily painting in the, the lighting right now, but I'm thinking about it when I'm painting the materials because 
Um, there's no sense in like painting this value back here, like um, super bright. If I can kind of skip to the the lit side right away, it's lit. So I don't want to lose that like juicy red. So I'm gonna erase some of the marks I make. Cause they have they have like this transition. These trees. It's like this this awesome like gray down here. Transitioning to this red, which I might risk like punching even more. And then to this like sort of light bark color. I'll do those little knobs that I was talking about. Decide where the branches are coming from and where they're going. Like if this branch connects right here, you gotta decide that. I want it to be behind, I think so. Don't forget the branches just like spatter them with some some like green it'll like fake like there's detail on there I want some more of this gray this gray is a nice like bounce too it's a nice like unifier of the, the like green on the ground And now I'll just paint in like some green where it's missing, where I want it to be. And maybe like Oops. <clears throat> So, I know I said I wasn't gonna make big composition changes, but like this, this kind of section right here feels a little bit awkward. So, I will just, when in doubt, add trees. Always flipping my canvas. I know I'm the first person to ever say that, um, but it's kind of like it's good to develop that habit. I do it so much now, just because like I developed um, the habit, and it's it's really important to see your composition from both sides. Um, and some people even flip like vertically too, just to like remove. Uh, so you're just thinking more abstract about like your shape uh, arrangement and size relationships and stuff can be really helpful. So I think I think what I'll do is I'll I'll do a quick little like lighting of the whole scene. I'll work a little bit more on the water right now, but I want to just do like a quick overall lighting of the scene and then I'll finish the video. And then what I'll do is I'll finish the painting and I'll just add it in after. Like I'll, sh I'll, I'll show a time lapse of finishing the painting so that uh, you guys can see how I would actually take it to the finish. Um, but I don't know how long I've been going for. Okay, so, so this has been an hour. So you can see the stage that you can get to like pretty quickly. And, I, and I've like dilly dallied and and messed around on some things longer than I should have, but uh, especially in a work setting, it's a really good method of like colorizing your sketches. Um, if your art director or if you're in school and your teacher like likes something and you wants you to proceed with it, you can pretty quickly add colors this way and get further approval. Like show them early and say something like this. So like I'll do I'll do a little bit more here. I'll, sh I'll add some lighting and I'll show you like 
what I might show someone and say like, is this kind of like what you had in mind? And then if they might say yes, go for it. Or like they'll ask you to make little changes, which will be easy because you have these layers set up. Um, so it's a really efficient way to work. I really like working this way. So the, the water has like this kind of like, I don't know. It's going to be hard to work because it's a different lighting situation. But I still want some of those tones. It's got these like greens and blues. And I want some of this like skylight. And don't forget the shadow or the uh, reflection of these little, little ground pieces. And Back here, maybe it might be nice to have the Okay. So I think what I'll do is I'll just Oh no, look what I did. I put this on the wrong layer. So, just grab everything I just did, cut, and put it in the water. Oh no, wait, not cut. Um, what happened? Oh, okay, I see. There. And I'll just do like a little overall sort of wash over the water here um, with these different values. them a bit more now here I might like might make this on a lighten layer and then just tone it down and then maybe like you can see like if you look just from a value standpoint at the water versus mine they got a lot of like contrast going on in the water because it is a big part of the image here. It's not as big of a part of the image in mine. So like, I'm not worried that I'm not getting this much contrast. It is cool though. So maybe I can like the best of both worlds a bit. I'll do a little level crunch and then I'll mask it out. Paint it in a little bit. Oops. Paint it in like this foreground and stuff. So, so yeah, now I'll do a quick lighting. I'll just show you, do I want this? Yeah. There's a little bit of weirdness happening. Again, I shouldn't worry about this stuff right now, but I don't like, sometimes I see artifacts and they bug me. Okay, so 
What's that doing? Okay, I'm gonna have to pause to see Photoshop. Sometimes this is bug for me where I can't click on anything and my cursor doesn't change. Give me a second. Okay, I'm back. I'm merging everything. So here we go. I'm gonna do just some general lighting on everything. I'll start with This is weird, but I'm gonna start with these trees. You just take like a dark value, use like an airbrush. Think about where the light is coming from and try and like get, do like a uh, like global lighting pass. You could do this like just on a layer on top of everything. Um, but since I have the layers, I'm just gonna do it quickly and try and like stay, try and like stay, um, do it sparingly. Uh, Cause I do like the diffuse lights that's, that's happening. Uh, okay. And this little line is bothering me. foreground go to this just like a airbrush kind of I don't want to destroy those like nice colors I got so just gonna do it this way and then you can change this to multiply and then you can mess with like the tone the tone of the shadows you want like you can colorize and make it like a blue shadow and see how that's working um you can desaturate it you can go really stylized and have it this way um you can make warm shadows depending on but i'm just gonna feel it out here And then these kind of, you can like erase it to have these kind of ambient lit um, plateaus in shadow, which always look cool. And I want to have some light hitting this tree. This one can be in shadow a lot. Um, then you can like, which is, uh, let me just change this to maybe darken. I don't want this one to be super strong. Because <clears throat> I feel like the local colors are doing a lot of cool things there. So why would we, why would we hide that? Then, the, yeah, so what I was going to say, super fun part everybody loves is the atmosphere. Um, airbrush. Uh, you can use like a this this brush that everybody has too um just kind of weird textury airbrush if you want to like have a little bit of a like Derek Zabrocki look but I'm just gonna use a regular one put it on like 20% or something and like don't just don't just do white because that like I don't know it washes it out it doesn't look that good I like pick like a darker value and I almost want the house sometimes to like get lost in the background so I'm gonna go to like 40% and like you can clip it to the house if you want so then you're not affecting the layers behind but just make sure you keep in mind like if you make the house light there's still layers behind that aren't being affected that will stay dark so just keep that in mind um, but I want to like make this feel so I might just get something going like this and then take out where I don't want it soften and then you can just like 
lock this layer and uh, you can work with like darker values or like lighter values Oops. Like, you can bring those in on top or something um, I'm seeing some artifacts here so I'm gonna zoom way out just look at it might dial it back a little bit And then like, so I'll just, I'll lock the back layer and I just want these to kind of fade with the, these trees in the back to kind of fade with the atmosphere. So I just do that kind of thing. And so then you can, if you were trying to present this and not necessarily finish it, you can make a layer on top for just atmospheric lighting or like camera effects. Um, and you can experiment with like color dodge or linear dodge to add some cool kind of atmospheric lighting. So, um, which can affect like everything. Like it, it will bleed into the foreground. It's like, if you're looking at if you take a photo of something that's backlit or the sun is low in the sky, that light will be absorbed in the atmosphere and kind of shroud the thing. So Dodge is kind of like you can punch up values and really make things like I can make this a really hot like sunlight. Um, so Dodge kind of like I'll just use it to like cheat and punch things up. Like I want this to be really hot like hot spot up here also just a quick side note about color dodge if you want it to behave really well uh double click it turn off transparency transparency shapes layer and you'll see like how much better that effect is versus if i turn it on i mean look at that so it's a little trick you can also get the same effect if you without doing that, if you just fill the layer with black first. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll just, I'll just use it to like punch up the, the hotness of the, uh, the sky, maybe like the photo and can you even like, I don't know if like, if I even want to cut out the house more, I like how it's kind of in the the mist like that and then just turn it on and off see what's working and what's not i don't need it to be that crazy up here the other one is linear dodge a great way to paint light with linear dodge is change the layer to linear dodge do the same thing as color dodge turn off transparency shapes layer but then also turn your brush to linear dodge. And you can actually like just paint light with this. It's, it's really, really cool. Um, you can paint like, it's, it's like the cheater's way of painting light. I mean, look at that. I, if I want light, if I want like hard sunlight to come in, I could do this and then do the little trick I showed you and then do a little bit of erasing. And I mean, it's pretty good. So you can use that for atmospheric light too though, like camera effects um, by, I turn that off, by uh, just painting over top of your entire painting. And I can have this kind of light bleed in past these trees. If I wanted, I'm not sure if I do. And I might not even want the, and turn this way down, maybe 10%. And kind of build it up that way. 
Okay. So, that is basically the process for um, colorizing black and white sketches uh, that I use most of the time. Um, there are lots of ways to do it. There's lots of ways where you just paint directly with like color mode, uh, darken, lighten, and overlay and stuff like that. Uh, that always is harder for me. I like setting stuff up with gradient maps at a basic level and then just direct painting uh, local values and colors in. That always like feels better for me. And it feels like I'm not... Um, I don't know. I like painting directly more than painting with like color, like uh, blending modes, because I, I I don't know how to manip manipulate them as well. Uh, so, yeah, that's how I do it. I'll finish this painting and I'll. Uh, you guys can watch the time lapse right now, and then uh, you can check out the high res on my art station. So, let me know, please, if you guys like this kind of video. Cause it's really easy for me to make like i don't have to edit or anything i don't have to do a voiceover and watch a whole like hours of a painting that i did it's really easy for me it's fun uh i hope i it's okay to listen to me and like i ramble and stuff but but i hope it's okay uh i just wanted to say too thank you for everyone who's commented on, commented on my videos i know i have i haven't posted for like a year and I only have like three videos, but it's hard to find time to do it when you're working. And plus I have personal projects that I like doing. So I thought maybe these real time videos could be like kind of best of both worlds. It's like a personal project that I can just record and talk about. But thank you so much for your comments. They really make me feel good. And it's like the only reason why I have any confidence to keep doing it is because uh, you guys... Uh, gave me some positive reinforcement that you like them and, and that uh, you, you can handle listening to me and stuff. Um, Cause you know, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's definitely outside of my comfort zone. I'm trying to do something new. So um, thank you guys so much. And if you liked the video, like it and feel free to subscribe to my channel. Cause I, I want to do more of these. So, so yeah. Thank you so much, you guys. Bye-bye.